lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL, where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. Today is actually kind of a special show, so I'm going to be doing some premium content for Patreon. For those of you who haven't heard of Patreon, it's a site where you can support your favorite podcast, artists, and all things creative. So we're going to be doing premium content there. So today's show is going to be with Chris, Chris Valentine, the BF. And uh, he'll probably be join, joining me for more of the premium content over on Patreon. So be sure to go over there and check out the content. It is patreon.com slash DRL podcast. Hey, babe. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. How you me. doing? I'm good. You haven't been on since episode two. I know. It's like ages ago. What have you been doing? Uh, I don't know. I'm working, watching TV, doing <laughs> dad stuff. You're <laughs> like, you live with me. You see me every day. You know what I've been doing. <laughs> exactly. Um, So the reason that Chris is on with me today is because um, we've been having some pretty lengthy discussions about the season three premiere of Insecure and um, just some things that we we agree on and disagree on and have been been reading on the Internet. And we're like, you know what? We got to talk about this on the podcast. Um, So to help you understand how Chris and I watch television, uh, the I believe it was a 35 to 40 minute uh, episode of Insecure took us about an hour and a half because easy. We pause like every other second. We call a pause and then we talk about what's happened in the two minutes since the last pause. So <laughs> so we've thoroughly watched this show, which is how we watch TV. And babe, shout out to you because before I met you, I didn't even know how to watch TV. You know, most people don't. <laughs> it's good to have a friend like me in your life. I get that. No, I, I'm the type when I watch any show, even if it's a show I really like, I'm also doing like television is just always a background for me. So I'm also doing like five other things. Like mm-hmm. I'm returning a text. I might take a phone call and I don't hit pause through any of it. That's probably because I grew up, you know, like with just regular TV for a really long time and you couldn't always hit pause. So I just, you know, I go about my business. I'm probably, I could even be reading an article or a book. And so I'd always catch pieces of things, but never really a full show. So <laughs> since I met Crystal, that's all changed. There's like a whole pause etiquette thing that we have. So do you just cover up parts of Picasso paintings when you look at them? Yeah, that that piece I don't like. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think of TV that way. The film, I think of it as like it's a piece of art that someone made to be watched from the beginning to end for my enjoyment. I think it was meant to be viewed in its entirety, and you should you should give it that attention. If you can't, then do the thing you need to do. All right. I get it. I respect it. I've learned. Um, so we thoroughly watched it. Ins- <laughs> so y'all can't see her face. She'd be in here wilding. <laughs> so I, we have thoroughly watched Insecure, and a um, couple well, things I want to talk about. I had to go back twice. We, we watched twice, actually. Yeah. yeah. After seeing what people were saying on the internet about the show, I, I, had, to, I had to double back. Okay, what what did you think of the episode overall? The themes that you sort of we, we sort of talked about were the open relationships and the way that that is being portrayed, Issa and Molly's friendship, and the level where it's at, and sort of how they're both very flawed in their reactions to things for women of their age. Correct. So, not just them. There's you know pretty much all the characters are kind of like. Their real age minus 10 years in terms of some of the decisions they make. But again, that gets us to the big disclaimer. It's a fictional show. And if everybody was making good choices all the time, it may not be as interesting. Right. Like we probably wouldn't be watching or talking about it. So it's TV. We get that. But what should what should these people be doing in real life? So like what upset you? Uh, Well, first of all, Molly, a couple things. She... She, she just seems like a little bit of a hypocritical person in many ways. And also just some of the things that she does don't add up. Right. So we've seen her be a really good friend to Issa in different ways over the course of the series. And, you know, she comes back from her vacation. looks like she had a great time. Um, basically doing a lot worse to some guy. You know what pissed met? me off on the vacation? She's like, oh, you got a visa? And he was like, oh, I'm from Cincinnati. Like, he has no accent. I don't know which island you're on, but I assume there would be somewhat of an accent if he wasn't from, if he was from there. Come on. Yeah, she was bringing that Bo Derek privilege. Right. I felt like that was like very like, if a white lady did that, we would have been tripping about it. <laughs> exactly. And it just seemed really out of touch. And, you know, she was happy to, you know, 
enjoy his company on her terms when she won it and then, you know, scoffed at the opportunity to even know anything about him. And when he offered to, like, meet up with her in L.A., kind of kind of played him. And in, and in a way, it mirrors some of the things that she's suggesting that Dro is doing to her. But in actuality, it's nothing like that. And so it kind of just starts off from there. But I, I wasn't even talking about that part. I forgot about that. That had me <laughs> heated. But, um, you know, she gets back from the vacation and she's sitting down with Issa and they're having lunch or whatever. And Issa's like, I had this traumatic experience. Like Daniel had this girl, which everyone probably thought was her. Him right, and Issa, right. Which at first I was like, okay, this is a nice place to stay <laughs> for everybody. Free rent. No. <laughs> So Molly hears this, knowing she's already like kind of down on her luck, going through a rough time, you know, basically struggling in many ways. And she hears this, and her first thing was, well, you know I'd let you stay at my place, but you broke that vase once. I thought that was so cruel. I'm like, what kind of friend is that? Now, this is coming from a person who doesn't like people staying at my house. I get that. You don't even like me here, I barely like you at our own house. But, (laughs) (laughs) But, like, if it's my best friend... And you broke a vase, like that's the thing I'm gonna be like, no, I'm drawing the line. That was so weird to me. Like, why, why? And especially since she was out of town for like five days, why couldn't she stay at your place while you were gone? Like, why did she have to be subjected to seeing this man having sex with other people? Right. <laughs> so to me, that was kind of like, uh. but again, they're fictional characters. And if she is at Molly's house, then we don't get any of the tension and drama that's going on with the Daniel situation, which raised a lot of other interesting issues. It raised the issues of why can't Issa communicate with people? Why does it take like two, three, four, five bites of the apple for her to get things out? And I think that's actually one of the more intriguing things that were illuminated in this episode. And she dealt with it pretty masterfully. So she's in a tight spot. She's at his place. She's subject to his will, his whims, and kind of doing whatever um, to kind of stay out the way, but also be kind of gracious. And she has this moment where she's like, I I want to confront him, but I don't want to seem ungrateful. I don't want to seem like he hasn't been generous. And I think she handled that very well after a lot of coaxing from him where it was like, okay, he said, I'm sorry. Yeah. But this and that is like, okay, what's wrong. And then it's like, well, nothing. It's like, well, What's actually wrong? I felt for her like, no, nobody who has feelings for somebody wants to see them or hear them with somebody else. But at the same time, like you, this is where you chose to stay. Like of all the places, apparently not Molly's, but of all the other places you could have stayed, like this is where you choose to stay. And you sort of like open yourself up to whatever comes with that like you don't make the rules here this is his house you guys aren't together you didn't make a declarative like you came and you said i'm staying on the couch and he said cool so right away when you said that that means you're doing you i'm doing me on this couch yeah i mean something that someone said on the internet which i didn't necessarily agree with but in terms of like understanding daniel's state of mind is you know, she was like, it's, he said, uh, well, you know, Issa didn't, didn't uh, respect Lawrence when she was cheating on Lawrence with Daniel. And then when Daniel wanted more and pursued her and she kind of played him back for Lawrence, even after saying that wasn't really a thing uh, and, it, and it wasn't. And then he made even another attempt and she kind of played him again right and so from his perspective he's being pretty gracious by even be, letting her be there right and and to be honest human nature is always to to do that right she she actually eventually says like look i came here because i knew you'd be there for me and he was going to be there for her and he did but human nature you're always going to see that person and be like yo this is the person that played me like several times and like i want to be a good person but like i gotta be a little petty Right. <laughs> Petty is part of human nature. He was a, he was a little wrong for that. I mean, look, clearly she must have been asleep when he came back and was like, whatever. But as we find out later in the episode, when he goes to his sister's house to get the guitar, this person isn't just anybody. This is like an important woman in his life because the sister's like, oh, so wait, 
So what's Vanessa got to say about Issa staying there? He's like like oh. he knew, she knew who, who Vanessa was because you probably wouldn't tell your sister if it was just a exactly. nobody. And the sister's already saying like, you know, your niece is going to, I need you to watch your niece. And then she's like, okay, well, like, wait, hold on. And it's a joke, but she's like, so is Vanessa going to watch her? Which means that they've interacted or is Issa going to watch her? And so while that's supposed to be a joke and like a little bit of shade to him, it still lets us know that Vanessa is just not some random person he met. And clearly Issa was asleep when they came home. But he tried to kiss her at one point. Remember? Again, everybody on this show kind of acts a little bit immature. So it's like, how serious is Vanessa? Because you really tried to fall right back into that space when you felt like there was like a, a spark for a moment. You know, like I said, everybody on the show does a little bit of crazy stuff and a little bit of things that aren't great decisions. And I don't think Daniel has really had a chance to prove to us as an audience that he's like not prone to keep making mistakes or not prone to you know infidelity or anything that people struggle with i just think that he just pursued isa real hard and got got the stiff arm a couple times but that doesn't mean if he's if she had said yes he wouldn't have messed up right i mean she messed up no matter what isa does they find a way to like have her wrap up some of the stuff and like correct a lot of it in really short periods of time and that one conversation with daniel with some coaxing from him, because again, they're both all being portrayed as like making some of the bad choices or wrong choices or being a little immature in order to create the tension for the show. But she, in a tough situation, expresses all the things she needs to express to Daniel about her comfort in the place, her appreciation. Like, can you help me out by do, get, doing me this solid and kind of like being a proactive part of like, okay, you shouldn't come home this night or. The house right, the which is fair. He and, didn't necessarily owe her that, but as a courtesy, like, yeah. And she handled that beautifully in a tough spot. And he, um, you know, he didn't know how to process it at first, but he went in his room and he came back out later. And they were, and he sat down. And they watched TV and they had a laugh. And he was like, you know, whatever, we're right? Good. And that's fine. And uh, I think people can take a lot from that in terms of understanding. You can just communicate with people. Right. You don't have to like say something with the intent for them to either challenge it or ask a question so you can say the next thing and chip away at it. Like it might not feel like it's easier to rip the band-aid off, but it's almost always easier to rip the band-aid off. And I think that was probably the thing that was interesting to see Issa cross the bridge on because that could have helped save her whole relationship with Lawrence or brought it to a head a lot, a lot earlier. Right, but people sort of like throw little hints or particles out there and see how people react to the hints and the particles. But when it's just like this little hint, like you don't necessarily know what you're reacting to. Like Daniel said, be real. Right. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong? Be real. Right. And when she did, everything was cleared up until that point. It was all just miscommunication. And, uh, I mean, that's the exact, her, her miscommunication is the reason why Daniel's in the picture now. Now here was my biggest issue with the episode. I don't like how the open relationship is being portrayed. So I think what's happening is people don't know a lot about open relationships because they're not something that's openly discussed on a lot of television shows. And so people, especially not with black folks. And so there's these inferences being made by the audience about how they would feel when a situation like that, I would feel like, you know, leave your wife or leave me. Like you have to choose or like, like, And so we're putting that on her. And so anything that she does that is flawed, we're automatically saying, well, he's married. So, and it's, so she can almost do no wrong, but here's what it is. They're friends. He says, Hey, just so you know, me and my wife, we have an open thing like you really want to explore this. Let's do it. Like everything's on the table. Like at to this point, he hasn't lied about anything. No, I mean, there's only been speculation that he lied. Like, in the basically bowels of the internet, people are like, well, I'm not sure his wife knows. People run this game all the time. And it's like. But this episode, it was pretty clear. When right. his wife called and he was like, I'm still at Molly's. This is, you know, in the morning. They're about to make pancakes. Yeah. Like, and it there's didn't no. It seemed like a, why didn't you come home call? It seemed like a. Just checking in. Like, hey, it's the morning. You good? Yeah, I'm still here. All right, so you're safe. All right, cool. Right. I'll and so, and then that made her upset to the point where she's like, now you have to, you have to choose what you want this to be. And it's like, he's always told you what it was. So you've always had the choice to say, you know what? Like, 
this is too much for me emotionally and like I don't want it so like let me stop but in the same episode after she you know gives this whole tirade about how they're either acquaintances that fuck or, or friends that are friends and then within days he's like hey let, let's go out and celebrate and she's like okay again he's changed nothing like it's up to you first of all she was ready for breakfast. Phone rings. He handles the business that he has to handle that has been on the table. And he's like, you ready for that breakfast? And she's like, nah. She's totally entitled to change her mind. She's totally entitled to express that. But she does do it in a little bit of a childish way. We need to either be acquaintances that don't have sex or if we have sex, you can't spend the night. You can't take me on dates. You can't call and text me. And no breakfast basically basically like which is fair if if, if those are her ground rules that's fair and she looked at him and then he was like oh you want me to leave now she's like yeah and that's the path we're chosen they both kind of chose the friends of benefits path right but you leave right and that's fine no big deal people are like why he took so long to get out of bed because he said what's wrong she said i need other things to be able to deal with this it's hard for me to deal with this and then he said because he's such a bad guy well, what do you think we should do? How do you think we should resolve this? And she gave the two options. He didn't know he had to leave right away, but he left right away and was like, all right, let's figure that out. Now, look, did he then follow up? Because she's always flip flop back and forth and say, hey, you know, even friends celebrate. Like, let's go do this thing. Like, let's get together at this place. Um, And that was him, I think, testing the boundary of what she said. Like, she said this, but did she really mean it? She was in the moment. She was angry because of the call, because literally a second ago she was ready for breakfast. And look, that's fine. All of that is growing pains. I didn't mean in time, it seems like this has only been going on like a month, month and a half. Like, it's been two weeks since Issa's been at Daniel's, apparently. And it seems like all the, the house, I mean, the, the big dinner party and all this stuff happened like within the last month. From so last season. It's from yeah. last season. So it's all new. And, um, yeah, so... They didn't end up getting together because the fight in the backseat, which was hilarious. Great writing. Right. <laughs> if you were Molly, what would you do? Would you even get involved in something like this? Like, I, I am actually curious about this from a guy's perspective. So let's say you had a friend that was like married now and, you know, you hadn't seen her in a while. And she was like, oh, like I'm married and, you know, I have a husband, but we have an open relationship like and you're single. What would you do? Is that something you would even involve yourself in? Especially... If you're at a point in life where maybe you want a relationship or maybe you're open to dating or like you're trying to move to the next phase of your life, like what would you do in a situation like that? I'd really have to, I mean, I'm not just like a jump into stuff type of person. So I'd have to see like, well, how strong is their relationship? Because that's important to me. Um, If I would. How strong is the husband and wife's relationship? Absolutely. Because people have enough problems and relationships never exist without issues period um not forever at least um and so if there's already enough things that this could be the straw that breaks the camel's back like i don't want to be a part of that i don't right. want to be a part of the downfall of someone's relationship in particular if we end up having a good relationship for what it is mm-hmm. and then they they go down they have a downfall and it's like well, things else are always good. Why don't we just continue that? It's almost like you pushed it over the edge and then scooped it up, even if that's not how it happened. And then how could you even really feel about that? Especially if now you have that opening. And like you said, the backdrop is you want to move forward with a real, like a, a strong relationship. So right. it's just a lot of avenues to um, confuse things, but if their relationship was strong and they were like experienced in it, I mean, I don't really have like a, a lot of experience in understanding how those dynamics work. But if I could get a strong sense of it, I don't see why it would be a problem. It'd be no different than going on Tinder dates, but you know, safer clearly. Right. It's, you know, a tighter group of people you trust. Um, you know, I think that I would, I would probably request a meetup with the wife. Like, I would probably be like, sounds like you guys have a really cool open thing where you can communicate with each other. So, like, let's all go to lunch. And then I would try to really understand the relationship from there and see what it is. Like, number one, I know up front, 
if you're lying or not, if your wife really does know, and if this is really the situation. And then two, like I can assess the relationship between you guys. And then three, assess whether I want to fit into something like that and how I would if I did. Right. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, the, I mean, the, the issue is, and I think that's something that people commented about something that happened between Drew and Molly on the show this week is, you know, you could say something like, yeah, I'd like to meet the wife and like establish that. But what if he says, well, it's her boundary that she knows and like, she's aware, but she doesn't want to be like meeting people and stuff and like hanging out, which is fair. But because that's, that's a requirement of mine. Then I'd be it like, well, this, this isn't a situation that's good for everybody. Then. Right, so right. it's a situation that shouldn't happen. No, I get you. But uh, it, it ties into something that happened um, when Molly and Dro actually finally communicated. And again, he showed up at her house unannounced with the key. Which I hated. Not, I was just like, how dare you it, come to somebody's house? Like, I don't care if you have a key or not. I don't care if you've had that key since 1982. Like, you don't ever show up to somebody's house unannounced, number one. And number two, just get all comfortable. Like, did you see he had poured wine and stuff already? For both of them. But still, like, don't don't come up in my house and make yourself at home and then well, pour my wine. He heard she was in the shower. That, and she it seemed like she had just came out of a long shower. She's, like, trying on lingerie and, like, just doing, like, girly stuff. She wasn't even looking at her phone, which you know you're zoned out. If you take right. a long shower and you ain't but even yeah, looking at I your phone. But, yeah, I thought that was, like, she had said, like, you know, I want to establish boundaries. Now, she has been confusing about what those are and how she wants to do it and actually sticking to it. But... Step one of boundaries is not showing up at somebody's house unannounced. I agree with you. I, but I, I will say that as a plot device to get the conversation going, that's what had to happen. Right. Or else it would just be too plain vanilla. But anyway, he shows up and then she's like, you know, plays right back into everything kind of being cool. She doesn't like go off on him. But uh, she's like, yeah, I want my key. And people on the Internet were like, he refused to give her the key and he was being creepy and clingy and like standoffish. And that was very rude. And I was like, no, actually they have a relationship. It's not like a marriage, but it is a relationship. It's the same one where she was curled up smiling about to have breakfast until that phone call came in. It's the same one why she kissed him when he was there. And it's the same one why when she's like, I want my key back. And he's like, why what's going on? He's like, He didn't say no or like be standoffish or get intimidating. He said, I want to know what's going on. Just like the last time when she confronted him, he said, what do you think we should do? Right. And so he goes, what's going on? Let's talk. And then she is irritated because it re brings up all her feelings. And then what she does is she says, I don't want just because you and your wife have this and her description of their relationship was just. Which I thought was to be an attack. Yeah, it it was so off base because she really has no idea because she hasn't taken the time to do what I said I would do. I would do, which is like, let me figure out what this actually is. Like, what type of relationship you guys had? But instead, she made the assumption: you guys are over here just fucking everybody and making things messy. And it's like, are they? And everybody doesn't want to be messy like that. It's like, well, first of all, calling their relationship messy is basically like calling someone a name. Right, which is why he said, what you're not going to do is talk about what me and my wife do. Which meant, I'm not going to explain. Which people were offended, like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that to her. He's the one bringing her into this relationship. But he's saying, you're insulting my marriage without knowing anything about it, really. Right. So don't do that. I'm not going to let you call my wife wife and I's marriage out its name. Right. By calling it messy or we fuck everybody we want. Right. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, and the thing is, like, if you don't know, like ask these questions like if if you really like are like on the fence about wanting to get into this ask these questions and figure out where you are based on what it is and and the people thing is people said drove so rude and he said this but even after he said that which was basically saying i'm not going to let you smear us but he immediately also and and he was upset because she was upset i mean as people are getting emotional at this point but then he immediately went back to but what's really the focus is what do you want to do and what are you comfortable with? Mm-hmm. And then she definitively said, I don't know, <laughs> but I know I want my key back. Right. And in that moment, he was like, <sighs> gave her the key. Right. Awkward silence, awkward silence. I think I'm going to go. And then she kind of like 
snidely was like, yeah, I think so. And I was like, okay, whatever. Everyone's mad. But it's not like he was like standing there menacing her, like how people were suggesting online and like saying he was refusing to leave and that he was being rude. And it's like, yeah, okay, maybe he didn't like completely turn the other cheek when she was rude to him and said, Dude, that's not what you're about to do and got a little loud. But like temperature, temperatures are rising a little bit, but he didn't do anything out of pocket. Did he? Um, I don't remember if they had this discussion last season or not, but was there ever a discussion around like, Molly to draw like what do you want out of this ultimately or like is this just a sexual thing for you like did she ask any of these questions up front I don't remember you mean in the bathroom at the dinner party or <laughs> <laughs> she didn't seem like she was asking a whole bunch of questions right she like was it just seemed like, like she was enjoying I'm sort enjoying of just the, the, the sexual freedom of it again no different than what she was doing before going on dates meeting people this and that to do with the preacher body whatever like she was just living a cash life and that's fine everybody's entitled to do it especially at that age and whatever she has going on meeting people if she enjoyed their company she enjoyed their company if she was having sex with them she's having sex with them but like you know she was hoping she'd find somebody to be with from what it seems like but she wasn't pressed about it and to me um this was just more of that um but, you know, there were some other dynamics that people on the Internet brought up that I couldn't completely dismiss. But it was, again, because Dro's married, it felt like they were basing it on he's already doing something wrong. And it's not wrong. Here, here's the thing that I just I need everybody to understand about relationships. I think there is no set rule for relationships. Right. So however you and your partner decide that you want to structure your relationship, as long as it works for you guys and you're honest about it within your relationship and, and with the people that may enter it, you're free to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I still don't see anything wrong with what Dro is doing. If in fact he is honest with his wife and if in fact she is okay with what is happening, there's nothing being done wrong in their marriage, in my opinion. Well, unlike real life, we actually have the writers of the show who said in between seasons that, yeah, she knows like that's an understanding people need to just have. And then the call, which wasn't enough for people because conspiracy theories are more interesting. Right. So let's just let's just go on the premise that everybody knows. Right. And everybody ev- knows. Right. But here's the thing that was interesting about that is uh, people were saying. And again, this this puts the predatory n- nature onto Dro automatically because he's married. They said, "Well, he, they were friends, and he knew she was vulnerable, and he's taking advantage of that to use her." Mm-hmm. And so, firstly, I I didn't anticipate I didn't take anything that they were doing mutually as anyone using anyone. That's the first thing. The second thing was they were friends, and Molly was equally understanding that they were both friends and then still wanted to explore this. She's having reservations about how much she wants to take it in and what she wants to do. And she, you know, she'd rather, I guess, not go out to dinner before they have sex or not fall asleep together after they have sex or not text, but whatever. I mean, I think what she's trying to do, which is the wrong way to go about it is she's trying to pretend that his relationship with his wife doesn't exist. And that's, that's what not it seems like. and 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 you can't enter a a relationship like 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 an op- with someone in an open marriage and pretend that their significant other doesn't exist. Like I, that's not how you do it. I would guess not. <laughs> so mean, it's like you know, you, like you can't get mad because she calls and she exists. Like she's there. That's a part of this. But that's when you have the freedom to say, you know what? Because I don't want to view this, and because this is what it is. This is your relationship. This is your wife. These are all facts. I don't want to participate. So don't. Right. So just don't participate. But I think it's one or the other. I, I don't think it's this whole like, well, we can just be friends and hang out all the time or we could just have sex. Look, clearly there needs to be whatever you guys decide. There needs to be a break. There needs to be like, look, right. let me let me figure my own stuff out. You do you for a while and we can come back together as friends. Just like any romantic relationship, like you can't necessarily jump from one thing to the other so seamlessly. Like oftentimes there needs to be Let's take a break, figure it out. We can come back together and be friends if our friendship was so valuable. Yeah. And some people say, you know, for every like year you've been together, that's how many months of break you need before you even entertain something else. I mean, oh, really? Yeah. So like, okay. if you've been together with someone five years, then some people say you should take 
10 to 15 months off Wait, before so getting twice? into a new relationship. Either two or three times, oh, depending on who you ask. Okay, so I have pretty short relationships, so I generally need about two months. No. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> Knock on wood, no. <laughs> but um, no, I think that they had an opportunity to do one of two things. And I think I started saying this earlier. They had an opportunity to have it go the way that it did and have those two layers of conflict between Dro and Molly, first in the bed and second when he came in. And that's great. That's fine. I get it. But there was un- unintentionally, it seemed like a demonization of what he has going on, which in anger could happen. The other way they could have chose to go, which would be interesting because it actually just isn't out there really, um, not in our community at least, is sh- let it go on a little more to show like how could you. How is a relationship like this possible? How does it work? Yeah, how could it be possible in a way that's not them arguing or not her feeling threatened or jealous or not her feeling like it's too much? Like what, what, what would it have looked like if she would have been like, is everything cool with Candace? Right. You, do you have to go? And he's like, no, she just, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't come home because I was here. And so she just wanted to make sure I was good and like, just let me know she's on her way to work and I'll see you later. I was like, all right, cool. That's what's up. Cause like, you know, my wife woke up and I'm not home. She knows where I'm at, but she called me to see if I'm okay. Right. right. And now I'm about to make breakfast. It would have been interesting to see them take that part and just let it go and let Molly be like, this is great. Just like how she felt right before the phone rang. Right. And that wouldn't have barred her having that sort of openness wouldn't have barred her from still pursuing other things. And eventually, and then she could be getting what she needed, whether that be like sexually or the friendship or just an understanding of something new. And then eventually maybe she's like, you know, I met somebody and this is a, 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 a I don't want this situation anymore. Boom. And that's fine too. You know what I don't like? Like that really irks me. I feel like as a society, we accept cheating more than we accept a situation like that. Oh my God. Like we're more apt to be like, you know, um, well, my boyfriend cheated and you know, I forgive him. And, and it's like, really? But if, if your boyfriend were to come to you and say, you know, what do you think about us maybe being in something open? It would just be like, so then I told him we were done And, and it's like, I don't get it. So you'd rather have the lie than the honesty. I don't understand it. Well, like if you came to me and you were like, you know, what do you think about an open relationship? Or like, I've been thinking about this or this is something on my mind. I like this person. Like, might I initially be gung ho? No, but I would respect the honesty. But you know what? I wouldn't respect because if you ever lied to me, then I, then we would just have nowhere to go from there. But I can have a conversation about things that I may not agree with or haven't thought about, but I can't have a conversation after you done messed up because you didn't choose to come talk to me instead. Right. And that was the thing I was talking about, about Issa and her communication in terms of the character on the show. And like, she never expressed herself to Lawrence and people, when she strayed were like, well, Lawrence was a bum on the couch and he wasn't motivated. And like, but then, and then when she cheated, it was like almost an apologist attitude towards it. And then now when people look at the Dro situation, he has been a pretty excellent communicator. He has been completely transparent and it seems like in terms of like sexually and like even the dates and the other stuff has like done everything he said he was going to do with Molly and not made her feel like neglected or anything right in any way and he's getting attacked by I mean I'm talking about the fans and the right. fans are attacking him the same people who like put their cape on for Issa to like justify why it was okay for her to cheat on Lawrence and like I just think that that type of hypocrisy is not necessarily uh, healthy, and it's like you said, you're gonna you'd be more willing to support the lie and the cheating because that's what everyone's used to, versus like an uh, ethical non like so non monogamy where you're lying is like it, you can excuse it or forgive it or do this, but like an ethical non monogamy where you're actually like have an agreement and understanding and rules and like things are going as planned. Everyone wants to have a conniption fit. Why is that? Do you think that's just how we're like conditioned to think growing up in this society? Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the fake prudeness, the fake conservatism of like this whole like, you know, Puritan values here in this country. Like people pretend to be modest. They pretend to have chastity. They pretend all these things. And the reality is it's like, you know, you go to the club on Saturday night, you go to church on Sunday morning, you 
drink champagne all afternoon at brunch and then you watch Insecure. And like all of those different dynamics are in conflict with each other. And some of them are in direct opposition of each other. And but people feel comfortable there. But if you imagine you said, OK, for some reason, I feel like clubbing and, you know, church getting getting lit all day on Sunday don't really mesh with the church part. So I'm going to pick one and just like have like a a wholesomeness of I'm either going to do one or either do the other. And then you marry that with something else. And someone's like, oh, I don't even go to church. It's like, well, at least they're picking one. <laughs> right. Or if they do go to church, oh, they don't even go out anymore. Well, at least they're choosing one as opposed to saying, like, I'd rather exist in this sort of like anti semi pro world where you're against something kind of for it. But then like with it, it's like people are more comfortable with that confusion than with clarity. And that's exactly what this Dro situation versus the Issa cheating situation is illuminating. Right. Um, that and the fact that now everything's kind of has this partisan tinge to it. It's like, I'm team Issa, and no matter what, she's right. Or I'm team this, Lawrence, and no matter what, he's right. And like, I'm actually just sick of that too. So I think these people in general in the world, including myself, just need to get our acts together. Do you think in some ways, though, that, that just it being portrayed – is sort of helping people become more open to the idea? Um, I think that <clears throat> the people who are going to be vehemently opposed to it, nothing's going to change their mind for the most part. Maybe on the margin, a couple people will be like, huh, that's interesting that they're showing that. And it might move them in a direction of at least, well, let me understand how this works. Let me be like intellectually curious. Let me be intellectually honest and like, yeah, still no for me. Right. Fine. Um, some people might say, hmm, intellectual curiosity. It's a, it's a possibility for me. But for the most part, I feel like the people who are opposed to it are just set up to be opposed to it. Right. Then there's people who probably were already on it <laughs> who are just like, this is great. We're being represented because we're real people too. Mm -hmm. And then there's people in the middle who I think are probably just dividing pretty equally or pretty proportionately to the vehemently opposed and to the, I'm going to try that. Right. Um, with a decent amount of people still stuck in the middle. Like, I don't really know what to think. And my life's that not that interesting. That's just TV. <laughs> the funny thing is I actually know several couples that are in something open and they talk about it with me, but they don't necessarily talk about it publicly. And I think that's a part of the issue, not just when it comes to open relationships, but all things is people don't talk about them and so they seem rare and so then the people that do it feel like oh well it's just like me so I don't really want to talk about it and be judged for it where if somebody just talked about it and then they'd realize like oh it's not such a rare thing and like I get to be who I want to be and it's fine so like whatever but it's like it's one of those things where it's just like people aren't willing to be open because of fear of ridicule because it's still something that everybody judges so much. Right. I think the interesting thing about, you know, our society and this culture is that um, the thing that we we're supposed to be very tolerant and like we say like, oh, we're tolerant and freedom and all this stuff. But the thing that we actually tolerate the most is intolerance. <laughs> and so, you know, this is a country where actors and actresses and just, you know, even people in my in finance they sometimes have to they sometimes like feel like they have to change their name so it doesn't seem like uh, like a jewish name or change their name so that it doesn't seem like um you know it's, a, it's or, or or like not talk about that they're a catholic like things that are just so like every day like yes there is people who are jewish there's people who are catholic there's clearly brown people like but like to force people to feel like they have to pretend that they can't be associated with that for professional reasons um, and, and those are like so already generally accepted that this is so far down the line. It's just too risky to most people. Right. It's too risky to say, you know, hey, I, I'm a person who's living a different kind of lifestyle because, you know, what if you lose your job? People are getting fired from being teachers for, for being, you know, gay or lesbian. Like, which I thought that been covered like 50 years ago. Right. <laughs> or at least the ball got rolling. Diversity is something that makes things better um particularly in hollywood and drama right um but um yeah i just think that people need to get their act together um folks need to be more 
actually tolerant of other people, um, no matter what they choose to identify as. And um, as long as it doesn't impede on anybody else's life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness and, and freedoms, people should accept people more and, and not, you know, use it as a weapon, not weaponize, you know, people's differences. Right. You're right. I like it. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I appreciate you coming on today and uh, talking insecure with me. Well, you know that group chat had me riled up. And 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 um, teaching me how to watch television. Of course. My parents did never taught me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, don't forget, I'm going to be doing more content like this on Patreon. So please go and visit Patreon, patreon.com slash DRL podcast. And um, you can access some of the premium content. But I'll still be doing weekly episodes on iTunes, Google Play. Oh, guess what? We're on Spotify now. So you can hey. also uh, catch DRL there, too. So please let me know what you think of the show at Tanisha Wood on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And until next time, wish me love. Hello again, my lovely listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of DRL. If you like the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review. And don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL. Thank you so much for supporting.